Every spring, a rarely seen serpent silently emerges from the shadows. The adder, Britain's only venomous snake. But while this elusive predator has survived for centuries, its future is now uncertain. Different factors of our rapidly changing world have pushed its population into serious decline. In this video, I'm diving into the biggest threats facing these exceptional animals and what can be done to save them. But first, I need to find one. So this was the main area where I found loads last year. So let's start the search. It's always one thing I remember, if you see them and you're ready for them, that's cool. But if one catches you off guard and just slithers away from just under your foot, it does scare the life out of me every single time. So they were, oh, oh, that was one. That was one, that was one, that took like no time at all. That one's gonna be tucked away now. I wonder if we can get a glimpse of it in there. So yeah, I'd really love to find one of the melanistic ones, like the fully black ones, or at the start of spring, you do get uh, males kind of doing these dances with each other where they intertwine and they're sort of competing for the lay days. That one kind of looked a little bit black. Hmm, I guess I'll check back there later, but that's a good sign. So I'm just kind of scanning along the edge of these bramble thickets because that's usually where they tend to be. They want to be, have their at least like their back to something they can slither into most of the time. Oh, Mr. Snake. So just through here, there's a piece of sheet metal that I found another time that was here. So I'm going to go out. Oh, brambles. Let's go and have a little survey of that one. and see if anyone's under there. Right, so it's just down there. No, really? I don't get it. Such a lovely, nice, toasty, warm bit of metal. Why? Ah, disappointing. I just slivered in there. I think they've already got quite a bit of energy from the sun this morning, so they are able to retreat quite quickly. There it is, can you see the zigzags just about? Right, let me give a camera on him. Right, so there's our first one of the day. See it just tucked behind that leaf there. And I saw one on the other side of this hedge as well. So there's probably several in this uh, big thicket of brambles. So I'll try and spot a few more. There we go, managed to get his head in shot now. So you can make out his red eye. Look how cool that is. Honestly, in my opinion, this is definitely in the top three most amazing animals in the UK. Look at its face. So the search was off to a good start, with two snakes seen already. I decided to go for a walk next to check out some different areas, and what I bumped into blew my mind. Right guys, this is actually crazy. I just came to this little pond, and a sparrowhawk flew through. It's over there at the moment. Right there, check this out. Look at that. Oh, they keep filming it. But I am, I'm literally blown away. So also, I only got the briefest shot of this. But I went over there to try and find it when it first swept through. And then I came back here and it was washing in the pond. I nearly died. Um, but I got a very brief shot of that. It was better than nothing. But, right, so this is the craziest thing, right? I've seen the sparrowhawk up close, once, ever, yesterday. No, 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 we're in a simulation. I tell you, this happens to me too often. I see something for the first time, and then I see it so soon afterwards. It's too freaky, it's like Pokemon. If anyone ever played that, you like go to a new area, find a Pokemon, and then you start seeing it everywhere, but not until you've seen it once. Simulation. Right, let's see what this guy does. I'm really hoping he comes back for another dip. This is so awesome to watch. Like I said, I saw one yesterday and it was closer than this. 
You'll see that footage at some point. I'm working on a big secret project. Uh, but yeah, I got to see it for maybe 10, 15 seconds. But this one's been sat there for about five minutes now. Just amazing to get to sit here and watch it. This kid. I honestly can't pull myself away from this guy. I just think this is such a rare treat to be able to see it for this long. And it's pretty close, like, especially when I'm looking through my camera, I'm getting such a good look at it. This is amazing, that's just an unexpected thing for today. I'm gonna have one more little look for snakes now. I've just walked back from all that sparrowhawk excitement. That was so amazing. They have quickly become one of my favorite birds. They're incredible orange eyes, bro. But yes, so back to Snakeville now. I was just getting my phone out, it's gone now, to show you one that was just there. And as I was doing that, one move from literally there. Oh, maybe jump. Oh, is that a snake I can see now? It is. I just want to get up close now with my phone. Oh, what the f was that? <clears throat> oh my god. That scared the s. I mean, I don't know what that was. It must have been a common lizard. Yo. Oh, and another f. Another. What the f? What the f? Sorry, it all just got very exciting. There's like three adders and there's a two. Why can't they all just come out and say hello? What was that little thing? So why are these beautiful snakes in decline? The main reason is a simple one. Habitat loss and fragmentation. Habitat loss occurs when a natural environment is destroyed or changed to the point that it can no longer support the species that once lived there. Things like urban expansion remove the space they need to hunt, hibernate and breed. Habitat fragmentation happens when the once continuous habitat is broken into smaller, isolated patches. In this case, the habitat still exists but is disconnected. This can force snakes to venture out to find new territories, and unfortunately, this often leads to road mortalities, as they're terrible drivers. Another cause of their decline is due to human disturbance and persecution. Many people are still scared of adders, even though they are non-aggressive snakes that have only caused 14 deaths since 1876 in the UK. Sadly, this can lead to them being disliked and unwelcome, which can result in intentional killings. It's not just humans to blame though, they only breed every two to three years, which means their population recovers slower compared to other animals, which doesn't exactly help their case. And also, there has been a rise in other predators' populations such as badgers, foxes and birds of prey, which all chomp up snakes if they get the chance. I spotted four different birds of prey all in the same area as the snakes, so they certainly have a lot of enemies out there. We'll find out what can be done to help them in a bit, but for now, let's have another look for either a melanistic snake or a couple coiled up together. The next day I visited the snake song was pretty cloudy, so I wasn't feeling too confident, but it didn't actually take too long to find these two. I also found some more in a slightly different area, and just as I was checking them out, this gorgeous fox came into the field. Very shortly after, the adder I was watching before started sticking its tongue out, and once it picked up the scent of the fox, it got out of there pretty quickly. I'll never wrap my head around tongue smelling. I'd already got a nice few snaky shots, so I went for another walk, hoping to see the sparrowhawk again. And what I bumped into this time really blew my mind. Guys, I'm in disbelief. I just found not a melanistic snake, but a melanistic rabbit. Fat. That is insane. What are the chances of me going around looking for a melanistic thing and then me finding a different one? I didn't get a shot of it, but I might just have to sit here for the rest of the day if that's what it takes. That is insane. That thing was amazing. Right, I'm going to pitch up somewhere and hopefully get a shot of this thing to show you. Just as I was repositioning to try and spot the black rabbit, I caught these parakeets stuffing the turkey, if you know what I mean. I had no idea so much headbanging went into exotic bird lovemaking, and it also seemed to go on for much longer than with other birds. But don't tell him I told you that, or he'd get big headed. Again.
and then I spotted the rabbit again. I did commentate over these shots very excitedly, but in the heat of the moment, I forgot to turn my camera off of slow motion mode, so it didn't record any audio. So instead, I'll pop in my reaction from afterwards. Guys, I cannot be the only one who thinks that is just the most insane coincidence. I don't know about you, I haven't seen many melanistic animals in my life. They are incredibly rare. I think adders have a slightly higher percentage than most animals. That's why I'm even bothering to try, but I'm so happy I got that tiny shot of it. So I can at least prove that I saw it. My mind is blown. Once I had calmed down, I headed back to the snakes and finally saw one of the things that I had come to see. I finally got some footage of two curled up together. Look at this. Okay guys, this is nuts. Just had a sudden revelation. Look, that's two snakes, yeah? One and two. Stop. We're looking at a three snake pile. That is absolutely nuts. Three snake pile. Oh, that's properly insane. I am over the moon right now. So obviously the goal was to either find a black one or to see them all curled up together. I've got three curled up together. It's mental. Look at the size of this pile of snakes. You can see it from here, look. That is bananas. This is an insane snake action. Oh my god, look. You <laughs> won't. Going a thousand miles an hour. Seriously, there's a fourth snake coming in in the back. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is so funny. Look at this. Oh my lord. So how can we save these fascinating creatures? The first thing that we can do is to protect their existing habitats. The designation of more nature reserves and protective sites in the locations where adders are still surviving ensures that these populations will be able to continue. We can also restore their lost habitats with rewilding efforts and projects. Bringing back areas of former heathland, grassland and woodland are all possible by doing things such as removing invasive plants and reintroducing native vegetation. To combat habitat fragmentation, the construction of wildlife corridors would be necessary. This would mean connecting populations by things like hedgerows or meadows, allowing adders to move more freely. Tunnels under roads or green bridges above them would also help greatly with this. As for changing negative perceptions about these animals, public education campaigns could be used to teach people that adders needn't be feared and that by simply respecting their habitat and sticking to footpaths, they shouldn't end up on the wrong end of a snake. So I managed to find a nice juicy pile of snakes, but didn't find a black one just yet. But I'll definitely keep trying until I do. So subscribe if you'd like to see that, as well as other wildlife stuff. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.